All right, let's dig into a big pile of bat shit. As you can see, I'm all ready. Because in order to play bad Batman games and do them justice, you got to be Batman. Let's start with Batman the Cape Crusader for the Commodore 64. This game came out a year before the Tim Burton movie, which makes it the only game on our list that's not movie licensed. You get a choice to fight against the Penguin or the Joker, but both games seem to be identical. I never really got far enough to find out. Every time you exit a screen, another panel pops up. I guess they were trying to make it look like a comic book, but it's just awkward. The first enemies you encounter are what I think are toy airplanes and gargoyles, or bats, which take shits on you. Yeah, if you look close enough, you can see the little shit bombs dropping out of their asses. The control is weird. As you can see, the instruction manual explains it. To do different punches and kicks, you have to hold the joystick in a certain direction while hitting the button. It's also ridiculous trying to hit anybody. You have to be like a step away. And no matter how many times you hit somebody, they don't die. Die. What the hell? There's also this annoying menu screen that keeps popping up. It took me a while to figure out that I activate this thing by pressing down in the button. So I get to this menu by total accident, and I don't know what to do here. What is all this shit? Restart game? Who the fuck's talking about restarting? Oh, the keypad's busted. Oh, that's great. Yeah, that's another thing about the Commodore. It only works when it feels like it. Well, anyway, the game sucks. Gotta give it the Batman punishment. Ah, oh, Batman. Next is the one which most people know, Batman on the NES. Overall, when it comes to games, the Dark Knight's been treated a lot better than Superman. Because there do exist good Batman games, and this is one of them. The graphics are dark and stylish, just like the movie it represents, and the music is kick-ass. Gameplay is addicting, you have a punch and a variety of bat weapons. You have a Ninja Gaiden style wall jump, which is something you really gotta get used to because as the game progresses, it gets trickier and trickier. There's this one part which I swear you have no choice but to get hit by these spinning gears. Getting up to the Joker takes a lot of patience and if you actually beat him, you deserve a medal. A good game for the NES library, but a hard son of a bitch. Next up, Batman Returns on Super Nintendo. With the release of the movie sequel, many more games came along to cash in on the franchise. This one's a lot simpler, just a good old arcade style beat em up. It's mind numbing and redundant, but satisfying as hell. You just beat the shit out of him. There are many versions of Batman Returns, and here's one on Sega CD. It showed off some impressive graphics for the time, like the cinematic shot of Batman behind the wheel and the 3D driving stages. To tell you the truth, I never made it past these driving stages. It just goes on and on. Boring as shit, next game. I'm Batman. Next up, Batman Returns for the Atari Lynx. A lot of these early handheld consoles had the same problem. You can barely see the screen, you gotta tilt it at the right angle. So this isn't gonna be easy to play. Anyway, you're just going around punching people. It's pretty self-explanatory, but god damn is it hard. I keep getting hit by dynamite and I can barely see where it's coming from. And there doesn't seem to be any kind of jump attack. Damn. All right, well this one gets the official bat stamp of shit. On to the next game, but first, gotta tell it I'm Batman. I'm Batman. The Adventures of Batman and Robin on Super Nintendo. Yeah, of course they had to make a Batman game based off of every Batman movie that came out, but they also had to do one based off the animated series. It's kind of like a cross between a beat-em-up and a 2D side-scroller. You just keep moving right and bashing everybody in your way. But then there comes times when you need a little bit of problem solving to figure out what to do. Sometimes it gets kind of annoying, like this part. How the hell was I supposed to know I can't jump on the roller coaster? But in conclusion, this is one you might want to try out. Not a bad game. Let it pass. Next up, Batman Forever for the Super Nintendo. Now we're in deep shit because this game is Triceratops testicles. Since the side-scrolling, driving, and beat-em-up thing had already been done to death, my guess is that they were attempting something a little different with this game. As soon as it begins, you'll notice it bears an uncanny resemblance to Mortal Kombat. It's literally the same control scheme with all the same moves. Being that it was also made by Acclaim, it makes you wonder why they would repackage a fighting game into a Batman game. 
I almost expect to see Batman rip someone's spinal cord out. This kind of fighting style just doesn't work for a platforming side-scroller like this. It just slows things down. Whenever you knock somebody to the ground, you gotta wait for them to get back up again. You hit them again, and it just goes on and on and on. It's also real annoying that up is jump, whereas there's plenty of buttons to choose from. But that's only the beginning to how atrociously ass this fuckfest is. Within the first minute or two, you come to a wall, which is pretty much a dead end. You can't do jack shit. So you figure, okay, I probably gotta go up there. So you try jumping all around, but it's useless. You try every possible combination of buttons till you find that SELECT shoots this wire out of your crotch. That's real random, right? The SELECT button? But this wire or grappling hook, whatever, it doesn't latch on to anything. Almost as if it's just for show. At first, I thought that you just need to stand in the right spot. But no matter where I go, nothing happens. Fuck shit. Get up there. This is fucking bullshit. You think to shoot up, you just press up. But no, it jumps. Sometimes I get it to work by pure luck until I found out that, okay, this is how it works. To shoot up, you press select and up in a very specific way. You have to press select slightly before you press jump. If you do it correctly, it shoots the grappling hook straight up in the air. But if you press them both at the same time, you just jump. That's a good reason why the jump button should not be up. Why can't it be one of the fucking buttons? Having the fucking up button jump is fucking fucked up. If this aimed your grappling hook and this jumped, then it would be fine. But no, they gotta be the same button. And on top of that, you have to be standing in the correct spot. And this spot is very precise. You think all that mattered is if you were under the hole. But no, it's like exact. This one magic pixel of a spot. You gotta be right on the mark. So you just lumber all around trying to figure out where to go. And whenever you access a new part of the game, it says hold on. Hold on for what? It has to fucking load? It's also interesting to note that you have the option of playing as Robin. But who would do that? I want to be Batman. I guess the goal is to rescue all the security guards. When you untie them, they do this melodramatic sort of pose, like, Yay, I'm free! The villains are all stock. It's just guys in flashy suits and guys with chainsaws. Oh, look at that! Chainsaw to the dick! Why does it take so long to kill people? Everything's so dark you can never tell where there's a door. Then you walk back and look for one of those spots where you can use your grappling dick. See, right there, that was just a lucky guess. Another problem is the fucking foreground keeps blocking me. It's like, get that shit out of the way, I can't see what I'm doing. Rather have a diarrhea dog take a lava dump all over the screen. And just when you thought you had the controls all figured out, you come to this part where you need to jump down. You'd expect to be able to just simply push down, maybe in combination with the jump button. But oh, that's right, there is no fucking jump button. It's up. That would be pretty impressive, to be able to press down and up at the same time. Well anyway, you try every combination imaginable, and guess what? It's down and R. Yeah, R! That's not even one of the main buttons! Why R? And again, the R button has to be tapped slightly before you press down. And sometimes there isn't even a hole to tell you where you're able to do that! Why is everything so cryptic? Look, this is fucked beyond belief! It's like the controls in this game are like something you do for a cheat code, not a basic move that you have to do in order to play the game. Why do they program it in such an asinine, ball brain, cockamamie, ridiculous fashion? It's like, geez, there's four buttons right in the front of the controller. Look, that's not enough to work with. Instead, they have to, like, program it, like, all into, like, weird kind of crazy button combinations and shit. It's like, what were they thinking? It's like, up is jump, select for the grappling hook. Select shouldn't even be part of the game. Select should be, like, for the menus or something. I mean, jeez, like, were they trying to just ruin this game? Just flat out, just fuck it up? Well, they did. Batman Forever, it sucked back then, and it sucks forever. A Batman. That's it. That's all the shitty Batman games I can take. Three is over. <laughs> Batman! Batman, you wanna play a really shitty Nintendo game, Batman? What how that Return of the Joker on the Nintendo Entertainment System, yeah, Batman? I'm not really Batman, though. You're not Batman! Batman, you're Batman! I'm Batman! <laughs> Come on, Batman, let's play! Come on!
I'm not playing any more shitty Batman games. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Ah. <laughs> oh, Batman, let me give you a hand. <laughs> Will the Bat Nerd escape the Joker? What bad games does he have up his sleeve? Tune in next episode, same Bat time, same Bat channel. because the Joker's in the title, I'm playing Batman Return of the Joker on NES. It's a follow-up to the first Batman game on NES. They couldn't wait for the next movie to come out, so they had to make an instant sequel. Unlike the first game where you have the option to punch or switch between an inventory of weapons, this game basically gives you one weapon, a bat gun. You can get a lot of upgrades to this weapon, but I can't help but find it strange that Batman is just going around shooting people with infinite ammo and never using his fists. For an NES game, the graphics are good, and the music, once again, is awesome. Seems like Sunsoft games always have good music. Blaster Master, Fester's Quest, yeah, I said that. You can even make Batman dance to the music, because when you press up, he turns his head. Oh, the bat dance! <laughs> I don't know what purpose that has. But when you get to the boss, the music sounds incredibly familiar. Mega Man 2? Yeah, it does sound like it. Just a lot faster, that's all. Once you get to the third stage, the game gets way too difficult way too fast. You're slipping around on the ice trying not to fall, and all these tornadoes keep flying at you. Even after a lot of trial and error, it's still next to impossible not to get hit by these things. Come on, you fucking tornado piece of shit. I know you're there. Just inching forward. I know you're there. Fuck! There's also the traditional annoying backwards fall bullshit. Whenever you get hit, you fly back, right? You're familiar with that. But here, even if you're facing in the other direction, you get sucked back into the hole. What in the holy mother of fuck is that about? That doesn't even follow the laws of physics. <laughs> Then there's the falling ceiling gag, you know, for you to get by, they have to fall, there's no other option. If you stand under it, it kills you. To get it down, you stand under it. What a paradox. Look at this pandemonium, there's a fucking ceiling waiting to come down and kill me, there's a guy throwing an oil drum, if I try to get out of the way I get hit by these rotating blades and shit. I take the guy down and then I try to set off the ceiling trap and... I'm dead. <laughs> You, motherfucker. So I try it again, and this time I just carefully step to the edge, just taking baby steps, you know. God! This game's fucking brutal! It doesn't even make any sense! Come on, you piece of shit! Fuck! Okay, so I'm trying to jump onto a moving platform while somebody's shooting at me. How the hell does that work? Oh shit. Whoa, I got lucky there. So I'm just gonna try to shoot him from across the hole, but as you can see, I can't. I just gotta get on there. Ass! One more try, I just can't get hit. Come on, come on, you motherfucker! Ah! Thank God. And how do you like this? You can actually get blocked by a power-up. But he can still shoot through. That's not fair! <laughs> oh, it's so unfair! <laughs> it's like they deliberately programmed this thing to be a means of torture! There's also a slide move, but I never found a safe time to use it, so half the time I forgot I had it. The only thing easy about this game are the bosses, except for the Joker, he's impossible. So overall, it's really not the worst Batman game, and it's not really that bad of a game in general, it just has some things about it that oh, suck. Oh, would so, you like to play a bad game, Batman? How no, about I the Game Boy version, Return of the Joker? <laughs> Have fun, motherfucker! <laughs> 
Okay, Return of the Joker on Game Boy. The game begins, and what does it sound like? I don't know why I'm making all these observations. I guess I just have Mega Man on the mind. So, anyway, it's completely different from the NES version. Your main attack is punching, but you can also collect other weapons. And the wall jump is back, too, so it's actually more like the first NES game. But there's also a grappling hook, which is really annoying because you can never get it to work when you need it to work. It's like Jungle Hunt! Did you ever play Jungle Hunt? <laughs> and other times, it just has a mind of its own. The control is overly complicated. It seems they should have just had the wall jump or the grappling hook, not both. Here there's deadly sewer water rising up. I'm desperately trying to make my way to the platforms, but instead I keep bouncing around the place. All right, so I'm just trying to get the power up that's up there. I'm trying to do the wall jump and the fucking grappling hook's going off. Ah, I missed again. All right, here we go. Just want to get, there we go. Okay, see, so I got the power up. Now I just want to land on that thing, but it isn't even, and then the grappling hook goes off. I don't want to go that way. I want to go to the right. All right, I made it. But now the wall jump, like, sends me back. It's like I didn't want to go back. I want to go to the right. The controls are like trying to get a horse to wipe its ass on an eagle. And I really hate that grappling hook. Okay, now jump. Fuck! All right, here we go again. Fuck! I swear that these games were programmed by the Joker. Oh, I can't believe this. Get up there! Get up there! That's it. I can't play this game anymore. I can't even finish the first fucking level. What are you playing, Return of the Joker? Didn't you just play Return of the Joker? Return of the Joker, Return of the Joker. Well, how about Revenge of the Joker for the Sega Genesis? Okay, so this is not Return, but Revenge of the Joker. To start off with, it looks promising enough. It's basically a 16-bit version of the NES game Return of the Joker. Why does it take so long to destroy the crates? All it is is just a power-up. It should take one shot. It's like in Fester's Quest, all those fucking purple blobs you gotta shoot. Oh, so you have a kick? I got it. Alright, kick for the crates and firepower for everything else. What's with the gargoyle statues? You shoot them and get nothing. What's the point? And why does it hurt you to touch them? Batman can't even touch a fucking statue? Then you get these live gargoyle statues, ones that attack. Oh, die. Shoot them in the head and nothing happens. Shoot them down in the, like, midsection, nothing happens. Oh my god. Like, what am I supposed to do here? I just keep shooting them and nothing happens. All right, so this doesn't. I'm trying to slide into them. Nothing happens. Oh my god, I'm fucking dead. All right, this time I'm gonna try jumping over. That doesn't work either. I try hitting them in every spot that I can. Okay, so you can kill them. I just don't know how to do it. But come on, you motherfucker! Damn! Okay, so what's with this fucking bullshit? What, do they just die whenever they feel like it? Like, is it a glitch, or is it like some obscure trick that I don't know about? It's just the first level of the game. Again, the first fucking level, and I can't go any further. I've had enough of this catastrophe. Oh, 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 the oh, 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 shit. Oh, oh, I've had enough of this shit. Come on. I'm gonna shove these fucking games up your ass! Batman Revenge the Joker! Ooh. Batman Return of the Joker! Ooh. Batman Forever! Ooh. Batman Return of the Joker on Game Boy! Ooh. And last but not least, Batman on Commodore 64! Ooh. 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 Holy batch!